Every day I come in and I'm happy to be the head coach of the Rockets. All the years of grinding through and just so many different things that led me to this point and kind of helped me craft my style of leadership. I look back on those days fondly and I know that they prepared me for this situation. Basketball has always been a constant in the life of Steven Silas. A true NBA lifer, Steven was born in Boston in 1973, where his father, Paul Silas, was in the middle of a 16-year playing career in the NBA. And that's the man, Paul Silas. And, and the Boston Celtics have won their 13th NBA championship. He won three NBA championships, two of them with the Boston Celtics. All right, thank you, Paul, number 35. Congratulations to you. And it was a great win, I tell you. Uh, give Phoenix a lot of credit. They hung right in that tub, but, you know, uh, I think we were the better team today. Steven loved playing basketball. By the early 90s, the Silases were in New York City while Paul was an assistant under Pat Riley's Knicks. He says this, preparation breeds confidence, so he wants a confident team. Stephen was in high school, and in addition to school and playing basketball, he also enjoyed the perks of being a coach's son. He was a ball boy for the Knicks for three seasons and had a front row seat to some of the most intense playoff series ever played. When I graduated from college, I definitely didn't know what I wanted to do like most people who graduate from college. I knew I loved basketball and I had a good education from Brown University. So I worked for the Retired Players Association. My dad got the interim job with the uh, Charlotte Hornets and then actually got the permanent position and asked me to become a scout. I was like a typical college kid, like, okay, you know, I'll just, I'll see what it's all about and I'll try. The job was, was hard because you're just going all over the country trying to get all these scouting reports in. I was going to Kinko's and sending faxes to the assistant coaches. I was doing advanced scouting, I was doing college scouting, I was working players out, I was doing anything and everything that you could possibly do. There were just so many hours involved. I still loved it. Wesley at the other end, Wesley with a layup for two. Sound has done an outstanding job with the Hornets since Dave Cowan stepped down. And an interesting situation for Silas this year is his son, Stephen, standing right behind him in the glasses, age 27, an assistant coach with the Hornets for the very first time. This is something that he really wanted to do, and I wanted him to do it. And uh, to uh, stand on the court and, and talk shop with him and uh, he understands that, that, that I'm still dad but in a working relationship I'm coach and uh, he's an assistant coach and and that's how we go we go about our job and it's worked perfectly so far my dad obviously he was my number one mentor someone who I could lean on ask questions he asked questions of me and really valued my opinion which was kind of weird to me me being so young and not really having much experience, but he would lean on me. To have a boss that you could ask questions and dumb questions and how, how did you handle this situation? Why did you handle this situation the way that you did? When I sat courtside and I was getting the plays of the opposing team and I was watching the coaches and watching the players, I was bit. Darren going to the rack and dumps it. That's when I knew that this is, this is for me. Mashburn turns, heads to the hole, and hits it. The Hornets have swept the Miami Heat, and the Charlotte Hornets have sent shockwaves through the NBA. The team moved from Charlotte to New Orleans. It was great. We were the new kids in town, and we were in a party city. My wife and I got married in New Orleans, and she's from Baton Rouge, so it worked out. I had an instant family with my family coming and her family there. We're finally playing basketball in New Orleans for the first time since April 6, 1979. And here comes Barron for three more. Yeah! 
It was a fun time. We had a good team. We had Baron Davis and we had David Wesley and Jamal Mashburn, PJ Brown, Elvin Campbell. I am, you know, around their age and I can relate to, to what they're feeling and, and that sort of thing. And, and I know my head coach better than anyone, you know, anybody else does. And I know how his thought process is on that sort of thing. And, you know, I, I have a way of relating with the players. Having a good team and a good guys and a cool city was really cool. Despite multiple playoff appearances, Paul Silas's future with the Hornets remained unclear during the 2003 playoffs. Paul Silas, one of the classiest and one of the best coaches in the NBA, came into a new city down here, had one injury after another. But who knows what the future holds for Paul Silas and the New Orleans Hornets. And this team has driven the 76ers into a sixth game right now. McKee gives it back down to Allen Iverson in low. Back to Snow, three on the shot. Here comes Iverson from the corner. Philadelphia takes the lead. And Philadelphia moves to the Eastern Conference semifinal round. There'll be a handshake between Larry Brown and Paul Silas. It ended up being a quick stop for us. You know, things happen. You get let go. That was the first time in my career that I had been fired, so to speak. Paul Silas would quickly land another job as the Cleveland Cavaliers hired him to be their new head coach and mentor to their number one pick, LeBron James. The next stop was Cleveland and the hoopla around coaching LeBron James for the first time as a rookie. I coached the summer league team and our first summer league game in Orlando. <laughs> it was crazy, it was sold out Orlando Arena. They're on their feet in anticipation at the TD Waterhouse Center in Orlando, Florida for the professional debut of that man right there, LeBron James. Going the other way there, point man James, nice dish. And it's Joppa side, converts for two in the paint. And James, the recipient, and wows the crowd. And he was Bigger, faster, stronger than everybody as a 19 year old. Also had all of this other stuff surrounding him, whether it's being on the cover of Sports Illustrated or his Nike deal and, and all that. And for him to be grounded enough to kind of power through that time was just really cool to be around. And tonight, you can cut the anticipation with a knife. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Sacramento Kings, here in the capital city of California, and there is the man of the hour in probably the most anticipated debut of any first-year athlete in any sport. Here comes LeBron James on the run. This is his best part of the game, and there's his first assist, and it's a beauty. Here he comes the other way. There's your first James Jam of his career. <laughs> Whoa. Here he comes oh. again. This time he dishes to his trainer, Davis. All of the things that he had to deal with as a young kid, but also just watching how good he was. You just gained so much respect for players who, who are just that great. Well, Coach, it uh, looks like the team came out carrying over from last game. Yeah, definitely. Defensively, we've been great. You know, holding this team to 35 points in the first half has been really good for us. The Cavaliers appear to be ahead of schedule with their progress. LeBron James. These guys in here have to fight. I'd like to have you, you, and you on the board. But a late season slump put Silas's job in jeopardy. LeBron James with 56 points, but it's not going to be enough. And there is Paul Silas, and he is trying to get his ball club back on track. They were once leading the Central Division, and they have really been on a slide of late. Less than three weeks after taking ownership of the Cavaliers, Dan Gilbert made a major decision yesterday, firing Paul Silas. The ownership change and in the NBA is reality. As a coach, you get hired to get fired. After we got let go from Cleveland, I was looking for a job. I, I was, you know, kind of out. And at that point in my career, I'd only worked for my dad. He has to get away from me, and he needs to go out to own his own. And, uh, you know, he, he will do well in this, in this league because he loves it. I knew that I needed to kind of branch off of, away from my dad because I was kind of pigeonholed and everybody saw me as my dad's son. I had to really go through the Rolodex and go through the phone and, and figure out who I knew and who could help uh, me get an assistant coaching job. And it didn't work out. 
It, it didn't. And uh, Wes Unsell Jr., who I'm very close with, and Eddie Jordan, who I'm close with, with Washington, they had an advanced scouting position open. So I took it. I wanted to be around the game. I still wanted to be kind of doing what I love at that time. And it was just kind of a, a reset. Coach relationship is built on communication and trust. Traits that Steven spent years watching his father instill into his coaching philosophy. After just one year with the Wizards, Steven would get another opportunity to be an assistant coach, this time for a different head coach. In 2006, Silas joined the Golden State Warriors and the coaching staff of Hall of Famer Don Nelson. I went through a little bit of everything in Golden State. So Don Nelson was the head coach and he was amazing. And I learned so much from him as far as thinking outside the box, relating the players. Glenn is standing <laughs> with Don Nelson. He's got a, an adult beverage with him. But also having just his own way of doing things. I want to run some offense, okay? Either open court, layup, good rhythm shots, or thumbs down. Time. Monte for the win. Yes! Warriors have won at the buzzer by Monte Ellis. So the first year was the We Believe team with Baron Davis, Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes, Al Harrington, Monte Ellis. That was an exciting time, you know, Oakland and the fans and everybody in their yellow We Believe shirts and it was just wild in the arena and Snoop Dogg coming to the game. We were like rock stars. We were the eighth seed and we beat Dallas, who was the number one seed. Richardson with the steal. And the onslaught continues. Richardson sets his feet for three. Yes! It was such a cool time and cool experience. And then we went through some down years, you know, Baron left, Steven Jackson left, and we, were, we weren't very good for, for a while, for like three years, and then Steph came. The Golden State Warriors select Stephen Curry from Davidson College. Look at this move by Steph Curry. Woo! Wow. <laughs> How fun is he? Didn't know that Steph was going to be as good as he ended up being. He has now made as many threes as any rookie in the history of the NBA. This guy is a player. He was from Charlotte, and I spent a lot of time in Charlotte. My dad coached his dad. We had a lot of connections, a lot of people that we knew in common. So we were like every single day in the gym working on whatever, <laughs> going to church. He would be at my house, like the two ball dribbling stuff. We started that together and he was bouncing it off his foot. And now I laugh that people are coming to the game early to watch him do his two ball dribbling. Now, if you can get to the arena early, Curry went through his unique warm up. It is worth the price of admission. That was really, really cool to see just a young guy who people didn't really know whether he was going to be because people thought he was slow. They knew he could shoot, but they thought he was slow and small. Curry spinning, Hanley put it up, and down! Unbelievable. He got his body together, he got his mind right, and he was just a pleasure to coach. We either have a charge right here, right. or not the worst thing in the world, they have to make a pass for a score. While Steven had firmly ingrained himself within the Warriors organization, major developments were happening across the country with the Charlotte Bobcats. My dad got the interim job after the Bobcats let Larry Brown go. And my dad called me and was like, I need you to be my lead assistant. And I was like, it's the middle of the season. I can't just leave and, and go be your, your assistant. I'm loving being here. I'm working with Steph every day. Looks like things are moving in the right direction. 
He was like, all right, I got you. And then he called me back. He was like, I need you to come. So finally, I went. Steven Silas, I heard the news he, he had left Golden State. I was out visiting Steph. I heard, Dad, Dad, I went, <laughs> what, son? My coach left. <laughs> I was like, Steph, very disappointed. He really liked Steven Silas, and uh, Coach Stiles helped him get to where he's at early in his career. It was great working with my dad again because I'd worked with him for so long, but then I worked for Don Nelson. I had different thoughts, and I'd worked with different players, different philosophies, different ideas. The games had changed quite a bit since he had coached last, so I felt like I could really, really be helpful to him. Well, in Charlotte, much improved ball club since Paul Silas took over for Larry Brown. He gave me a lot of responsibility through that time, but, uh, you know, Slowly but surely, the, the tides changed, and we got pretty bad after that. And we were historically bad, actually. Welcome back to Toyota Center as we get ready for NBA basketball. The Rockets taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Two teams at the bottom of the NBA standings, but looking for better things in the years to come. EJ with a good fake. Tate backs up, got the roll. Got fouled and no call. This is a letting him play tonight. He didn't get fouled on that? On the, on the. Have about three seconds, shot clock, game clock, and there's a turnover. Up ahead, Edwards puts it up and in. Timeout, timeout. Good KJ. You get that shot, you got to shoot that shot. You got to shoot it or move it or move it. Rockets with a chance to take the lead on this possession. Rockets on a 17 to 7 run, the first lead since it was 2 to nothing. Hey, just stay with it. Just stay with it. Just stay with it. Stay with it. Stolen away by Vanderbilt again. And a basket. Run! Got a lot to learn, man. A lot to learn. And Minnesota's going to get this win here tonight, 114-107. Yes, sir, we'll get through it, no doubt. <laughs> it's a tough loss for the Rockets. Imploded. The losses get to me, and they're hard, but the challenge of, okay, what's the message going to be tomorrow to the group? And how can I flip this in a way that it's making it a positive for the group? During his coaching journey, Steven Silas has seen his share of adversity on the basketball court. But one time that stands out the most to him matters far more than wins and losses. In January 2000, his first year with Charlotte, Steven saw firsthand from his dad how to navigate a team through tragedy. Bobby Fields was one of the leaders of the team and he passed away in a car accident after shoot around one day. It was just such a hard thing to get through. I mean, for the leader of the team and the veteran voice, getting through the adversity of that moment and watching my dad being as strong as he was. Bobby didn't think about himself. He just, he, he just thought of others, his teammates, what they were about, because that's, uh, that's who Bobby Fields was. And, and we'll always miss him, but, but he'll have a special place in all our hearts. Basketball brought us all together. That's how we got to know Bobby Fields. If we have any respect for Bobby's memory at all, we'll do as Bobby would want us to do, and that's go out and work hard, give the effort, and then whatever happens, happens. That moment right there, that Bobby Fields moment, was huge to me because watching the players like just grind through that season and make the playoffs and lose in the first round, but you could see after the first round like they had given it their all. So. The adversity that you face in an NBA season, I feel like it doesn't get much worse than that. As the Bobcats' season slipped away, their struggles on the court turned into an opportunity for Steven. I was allowed to coach some games in that, in that period. Um, my dad, Michael Jordan, Rod Higgins, they were like, hey, this would be a good idea for this kid to, you know, get a chance to coach some games. Steven Silas is actually the head coach tonight. It was good. You know, we weren't very good, but I got to call timeouts and I got to experience coaching games. And that's where, 
like the head coach idea crept into my head that I could, I could do it and I think I could be pretty good at it. Charlotte made more coaching changes, but this time Steven would stay on as a lone holdover from the previous staff. The Bobcats changed their name to the Hornets, and Steven spent several more years in Charlotte under head coach Steve Clifford. And pass, Avery Bradley can't get it to Isaiah Thomas. Oh, no! They're going to say it was touched by a Hornet. <laughs> Steve Clifford is mad as a Hornet. I was just about oh, to Steve say. Steve Clifford has been ejected. I don't think he's going to make it to the game. During that time, he would gain more experience from the bench, and in 2017, Steven was promoted to associate head coach for the Hornets. But the job Steven Silas has done to keep these guys' attention, to focus, and not allow them to just give into the game. Steven Silas did a, a great job, you know, managing the game in a way that got our guys back in the game, so that part is, uh, was positive. Steven Silas, the associate head coach, has been an assistant in the NBA for a long time. He is taking over right now for Steve Clifford. Kemba the step back. You betcha! I was happy that they fought back and, and um, gave a lot tonight. Steven Silas has long been on the short list to be a head coach. We did a good job on both ends, getting the ball down to Dwight. Dwight Howard! Steven's next stop would lead him to Dallas, where he joined Rick Carlisle's staff. To be around someone who's that smart and has a great feel for so many different things, whether it's social justice, whether it's free throw box outs, or you know, just everything Rick is on top of, I knew that that's who I wanted to work for. I had the opportunity to be the offensive coordinator for him. Luca was a rookie. Six tenths of a second, Bradson will oh, bring it back. Oh, oh Doncic buries a three out of the corner. And when we got Porzingis, we were able to play five out, get the ball moving. They swing it around to Porzingis. And let Luca just play to all of the greatness that he has. We went from a, you know, middle of the road offensive team to the best offensive team in the history of the NBA. Doncic pulls up, three pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! Big news out of H-Town tonight. Houston Rockets head coach Mike D'Antoni will not return next season. Tonight, fans are left wondering what's next for Clutch City. New Rockets general manager Rafael Stone led the coaching search and had Steven on his short list of candidates. We were trying to coordinate those FaceTimes and it took a little while to do it. I felt like it would go well and I knew that I would have a good conversation with those guys. Steven's family was convinced that this would be his big break. They were like, this is the one. We, we feel it. This is the one. Like, this is a great situation for you, a great organization, a championship organization. I'm like, yeah, you know, I've had perfect fits before and interviewed and, and this and that. I just didn't know what was the criteria going to be. I was just so close to it. Rafael called me and he was like, okay, I'm not offering you the job, but we have to just make sure we're organized. And then Stephen finally got the call he had been working for 20 years to receive. Just a little while later, he called me and he's like, okay, this time I'm offering you the job. And I was like, so excited. Wow, at this point, I'm like a head coach in the NBA, one of 30. I was emotional because of all the hard work that I've kind of put into it. That was like a surreal moment. My wife was like just off to the side of my kids. I hung up the phone and I told them I got it. And they were like, yes. And they were screaming at the top of their lungs. And then I called my dad and my mom, we FaceTimed. And they were like, we told you, we told you. And that just made me happy. Just to see the happiness of the people around me was priceless. 
the opening press conference where they actually like said that I was the head coach of the Houston Rockets meant so much to me. Obviously, I wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for my dad, Paul Silas, uh, what he's done for me all the way up through my life. The reason I'm here is because of him. The reason I'm prepared for this position is because I've been preparing for this all my life. Throughout his journey, Stephen never lost sight of the path that was created by his father and their connection along the way. There's just countless, countless stories that he has of not being allowed to do things because of the color of his skin or being excluded or, you know, just not having the same opportunities. And he just fought through it and he did it in his own way and and became a leader, just an amazing, amazing person who dealt with so much, sacrificed so much for me to be in the position that I'm in. The kind of trickle down effect of people who are principled, people who really just want what's best for everybody is, it's pretty deep. It's pretty deep and it's pretty cool too. Rockets play hard. That's one thing you can you can say about this uh, current Rockets team, even though they haven't won a lot of games. Give Coach Silas a lot of credit for keeping these guys engaged and playing as hard as they can. Yeah. Hey, that's good, Cam. Good job, good job. Good, good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Time out, time out, time out. Hey, if we stay on them, they will break. They will break. They don't want to play. We just got to, we got to take it. We got to take it. Let's give it to them. Renick again. Great pass inside, and the basket is good. And there it is. So, Steven Silas, the Houston Rockets, win their final home game of the season. I am a first-time head coach, and there's going to be bumps in the road that go along with that. But um, the experience that I've had leading up to this has, has definitely helped. I've, I've drawn upon not just a lot of experiences, but a lot of people who I've uh, leaned on over the years and have given me some great advice. For me, it's best to lead by example. Owning up to mistakes that you make, making sure that I'm on top of my X's and O's and, and adjustments, connecting with everybody in the building. There's just a lot a lot to it, and I love every bit of it.